Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to be talking about a couple of analyst updates, one from Goldman Sachs about their expectations for AI Day. I always think those are kind of helpful just to get a sense of what institutions are expecting for events like that. Then we've also got a bit of an update on that Elon Musk Solar City trial, some news out of China, and a couple other stories as well. Bit of a tougher day for Tesla again today, though the stock did recover some in the afternoon, ended up finishing down about 3% to $665.71. The Nasdaq was also down today 9 tenths of a percent. So I know it feels like a rough week for Tesla, but it's been kind of a rough week for all automakers. Looking at a handful here, you can see GM down 6, Ford and Stellantis down about 4.5%, Volkswagen and Neo down 7%, Xpeng down 6%, average across the board of those down 6%. So Tesla's been a little bit worse, but not really all that much, especially given the context of the NHTSA investigation. As the interest from that fades from earlier this week, everyone is going to be turning their attention to AI Day, of course, scheduled for this Thursday. That'll be 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I do believe Tesla intends to live stream it. We don't have those details yet, but I think Elon had previously said that they would, though I can't find that tweet at the moment. I'd be shocked if they didn't, and I'll also plan on live streaming it as well. So as I mentioned, Goldman Sachs last night put out a note with their expectations for AI Day, and in their introduction, they did note that this is going to be a purposeful recruiting event. So hopefully that stance from Tesla has kind of cut through to most investors, and I think that really helps to keep expectations a lot more realistic in terms of what Tesla is going to be talking about. As for Goldman Sachs, they expect Tesla to talk about five key topics, which they outline in this note. First, they say they expect Tesla to discuss its AI neural net and how it's trained. I would agree. That is something that we've heard Tesla talk about both at Autonomy Day and then if you followed Andre Carpathy's presentations, he's talked a lot about those sort of things. Second, they say that they expect Tesla to discuss FSD software, including the merits of its vision-only approach trained by AI. It's not too different than the first point, so I definitely agree on that as well. Third, they say that they expect Tesla to discuss the progress of Project Dojo. I think that's a no-brainer. Fourth, we believe Tesla could discuss progress towards the next edition of its FSD computer, Hardware 4.0. This is probably the first expectation there with any amount of uncertainty. Hardware 4.0, of course, would be the next step in Tesla's full self-driving computer hardware. They announced hardware 3.0 at Autonomy Day a couple years back, so a hardware 4.0 announcement wouldn't be too out of left field. And at Autonomy Day, Tesla did allude to a hardware 4.0, and if I remember correctly, offhandedly had said that it might make sense in a couple of years just to get more compute at a more efficient power level. And it does seem like we might be getting to the point where that could be beneficial to Tesla. We talked yesterday about Tesla using synchronous compute across their dual system on a chip, which is of course fine for now, but if they get to the point where redundancy is important, i.e. a robotaxi situation, if they can't make their code a little bit more efficient, then a hardware upgrade would make sense. Last year there was also a rumor out of China that Tesla was working with TSMC to develop hardware for, and that they were testing initial production and scheduled to go into mass production of the fourth quarter of 2021. Doesn't seem like we've heard a whole lot about it since then, but it's not like that timeline would be terribly far off. That said, my intuition is that we're probably not going to hear too much about hardware 4 at AI Day. First of all, I just don't think it's probably quite ready yet, and I don't think Tesla's going to want to talk about it until it's actually rolling out into cars and Tesla's actually ready to start retrofitting, because if they talk about it, people are going to want it. This doesn't quite feel like the right time for that yet. Plus, with everything going on in the semiconductor industry, it wouldn't be surprising to have seen some delays there. So I guess I don't really expect hardware 4 to be explicitly discussed. Again, I wouldn't be surprised by it. And if there were a question and answer section, I think it would be pretty likely to be asked about. Tesla may give some generic comments on it if so, but probably not in their best interest to be extremely forthcoming about it so as to not cause too much of a stir for current customers. Anyway, back to their expectations, they say, finally, we expect Tesla to discuss AI applications beyond autonomous driving, including for solar slash storage software and advanced manufacturing in its factories. They elaborate a little bit on that, saying, quote, we believe the company will discuss how advanced robotics and AI in factory systems can drive efficiency, reduce costs, and improve output, end quote. So this is definitely one of the more intriguing prospects of AI Day, because remember, with the AI Day invitation, Tesla did have that little teaser in there saying that attendees would, quote, also get an inside look at what's next for AI at Tesla beyond our vehicle fleet, end quote. I think manufacturing robotics is probably the best choice there, but who knows what we'll see on that front. Hopefully some sort of cloud-based AI service, but I don't think we're quite at that point yet. Anyway, good to get a sense of what Goldman Sachs and other investors may be expecting going into AI Day. Again, I think expectations relatively low, which is good. Between this episode and the AI Day What to Expect episode we previously did, I don't plan on doing another preview. I think we've got it covered by now. So we'll wait and see what Thursday has in store for us. 
Next here is the other analyst update that I mentioned. This is from Bernstein. So this is Tony Sakanagi who has increased his price target. Hey, hey, up from $180 now to $300 per share. Still an underperform rating on that. From the Street Insider article here, it says that Sakinagi argues that Tesla is not valued as a car company as the current price implies a valuation of 50 times traditional automotive companies. Well, I don't know. I didn't see on the calendar AI day for GM or Ford or Stellantis or VW. Is it possible that maybe that has something to do with why Tesla is not valued as a car company? I think so. Anyway, to get their valuation, Sakanagi says that they're using a discounted cash flow all the way out to 2050, actually, which is kind of rare to have that long term of a view and especially then to have such a low price target. But unfortunately, in this article, there's not many details about the numbers underlying their discounted cash flow model. In what could eventually be a quote for the ages, though, Sakanagi says, quote, We believe that FSD pricing will ultimately be largely competed away over time and might add $100 per share if Tesla is able to hold a multi-year advantage. Under optimistic assumptions, we struggle to ascribe valuations of much more than $50 per share for either Tesla energy storage or Tesla's potential robo-taxi opportunity, end quote. $50 valuation for Tesla's robo-taxi opportunity under optimistic assumptions? That's a pretty bold take. That's about a $50 billion valuation on what could potentially be the biggest disruption to transportation in a generation. So moving on from that, we've got an update here on the Elon Musk Solar City trial. Again, I don't think this is a big concern for Tesla shareholders, but it does sound like this trial is getting close to ending. It sounds like the last witness testimony was yesterday. So then there may be another period of quietness until a ruling is made, which I don't know how long that would be, but certainly something we'll inevitably hear a lot about whenever that ruling does come. Next year, we've got a bit of an update out of China. So this is from Reuters. They are reporting that Tesla is hiring managers for legal and external relations teams in China, citing a WeChat post from a Tesla account. As far as the external relations managers, sounds like they're hiring in several cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. And then apparently they are looking for lawyers who specialize in construction, anti-monopoly, and data privacy protection areas. Back to the external relations managers though, this is something that we have been talking about for the last few months, it has continued. I'm glad to see Tesla making efforts in this area, but at the same time it does support The idea that demand was a little bit impacted in China by some of the ongoings earlier this year. All right, last couple of items here for today. We've got a new Plaid review today posted by Doug DeMuro. He is a popular automotive YouTuber, about 4 million subscribers, and he posted about a 30-minute review of the Model S. The most important part of that to me was the final statement. He said, quote, The Plaid is truly fantastic and is quite possibly the best all-around car ever made. End quote. For those of you that have followed that channel, he does give each vehicle a so-called Doug score, and the Model S got his best Doug score for a four-door car, and was a point shy of his best rating ever. So, very positive review for the Plaid that a lot of people will be seeing. Last item here, just a tweet from Elon that I found the timing of to be a little bit interesting. Originally, this was from MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, who shared a video of a couple of Boston Dynamics humanoid robots doing synchronized backflips. Elon simply replying to that, saying, impressive. Now, I think the timing is a little bit interesting, given what we talked about earlier in the episode, with AI Day being this week. Not trying to restart any of that Tesla humanoid robot type of stuff, but hey, if nothing else, that Boston Dynamics video is interesting to see. So that is where we'll leave it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, August 18th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.